All right, we're live. A crazy fight week is in the books, capped off by a shortened, changed-up seven-fight card that was capped off by Alistair Overeem putting Augusto Sakai away at the beginning of the fifth and final round. As we welcome you all, all of you wonderful fight fans, to another edition of the People's Post-Fight Show for UFC Vegas 9 right here on MMAfighting.com. I am Mike Hack, being joined by Jose Youngs, Alex K. Lee, E. Casey Lydon is here. Joining us, also doing all the legwork on the production side as well, which is much appreciated. Appreciated. Welcome back, Casey. But uh, if you're joining us live, thank you for joining us. If you're listening or watching after the fact, thanks for doing that uh, as well. But, Jose, this was an interesting one. We talked all about chaos. That was, like, the main theme of the preview show. But I got to be honest, if the UFC put together, like, these subsequent seven, eight-fight cards like tonight's once in a while, and listen... This happened due to super unfortunate circumstances with a whole bunch of positive COVID tests. So I, I, I don't want to take that lightly at all. But having cards like this, every so often, accidental or not, it's kind of refreshing change of pace from a, from a viewership perspective. With that in mind, your overall thoughts on the card tonight. Mike, what did I say <laughs> on our preview show? I'm going to let you answer this for me. What did I say on our preview show? Until they get to the octagon... Don't get too excited, essentially. Exactly, 100%. I don't even want people excited when they're lined up, ready to make the walk after what happened to Trevor Giles. Anything could happen, and that is exactly... It happened to two fights this morning, so uh, seven, So what was it, like eight, nine fights, something like that? If that, and It was a fun fight. Like I was entertained by pretty much every fight. Like There were good stoppages, there were good scraps, there were great performances, so I think you said it best where uh, these things happen due to unfortunate circumstances, but sometimes... Uh, the the outcome is exactly what we want, and it, it was a refreshing change of pace from the from some of the last few cards. So all in all, I thought this was a fun fight. It was a quick fight. Uh, I have no complaints outside of it. Maybe it wasn't the most stacked in terms of name value, but nonetheless, uh, there's a lot of names that I'm sure people will remember moving forward. AK, what do you think? And and I guess the the big question everybody wants to know is what was your sort of litmus gymnastic scale rating you put on this card heading oh. in and how did it live up expectation wise i mean it probably uh, i mean uh, just the way the card was was unfortunately decimated i mean the, it couldn't be a higher degree of difficulty than like a seven uh and it might have hit it i mean uh, it's probably a 6.8 6.9 so uh i know everyone everyone who has isn't aware of the system is like what the hell does that even mean uh I, what i'm saying is it was a good card based on kind of uh what we had ahead of time and, and mike as you mentioned you know, these things, it, it happened because of circumstances uh, very much beyond the UFC's control. Of course, we wish nothing but the best uh, for uh, uh, what, who, uh, half, the card, Marcos, half the card. Mar Marcos Rogero de Lima, uh, Tiago Moises, who I know both withdrew because of uh, positive COVID-19 tests and uh, some of Moises' cornermen as well. Kevin Tividad, who we don't know exactly why, uh, undisclosed reasons, so hopefully he's all right. Even And even uh, well before uh, uh, today, uh, Nico Montano also tested positive for COVID-19, so hopefully everything's okay with her as well. But um, how's, yeah, Car I agree. how's Carol Rosa? Has anyone checked on her? Carol Rosa, was she also... What was, <laughs> was her? She, did what, they sent her to the hospital oh, yesterday. Oh, gosh, the botched, botched weight cut. Yeah. yeah. Right, so there we go. Another Let's one. also not forget... Brian Keller's original opponent, Ricky, Ricky Simone. Simone. Yes, uh, Cornerman tested positive. So hopefully everyone involved in these these calamities <laughs> is okay. Uh, but yeah, I agree. It's refreshing. I, I've always been an advocate for having less fights. I feel like four prelims, four main card fights is the way to go. Uh, especially the way the cards are now, where they're kind of struggling to fill them up. Maybe you don't have to force the force situation. Uh, it was cool that Ray Rodriguez, good for him, um, got the call and that they had him ready. That On, on paper, that was a good idea. But still, uh, I think for fans, this is a very, was a very digestible card. And certainly for us in the media as well. Well, I mean, at least on paper right now, September 19th is going to make up for everything because with the addition, the reported addition of uh, Hazmed Shemaev and Gerald Mearshart, I think there's 15 fights on that card for September 19th at this point. So we'll, we'll, we'll make up for it. Who knows if they'll all make it there? Just watch the preview show and Jose will tell you <laughs> not to get your hopes up there. But uh, just a reminder, we want to get your thoughts on the event as well, the performances, the current landscape of the sport as well. You guys like to do that. So whatever's on your mind, Leave them in the comments. We'll get to them momentarily. But in the main event, Alistair Overeem just doing what Alistair Overeem does. He finishes Augusta Sakai in the final round. It was a very technical fight for a while. The clinch was, was used quite a bit from both guys as expected. But in the end, Overeem and his underrated yet brutal ground and pound gets it done. AK, let me begin with you here. What did you make of the Reem's performance in the heavyweight headliner tonight? 
Uh, I was actually really close. I did think it was going to go five rounds. I know a lot of people were assuming it would end in knockout, which it eventually did. But I think people um, thought it might have ended earlier than it than it uh, than it ended up going. Uh, I did think like again, it's Sakai is really tough, really technical. I thought Overeem was going to win a decision. I thought it would be a little more comfortable for Overeem as well. I was actually really impressed by the pressure that Sakai put on him early. The fact that he was willing to battle him in the clinch, which seems like an insane thing to do when you consider Overeem's background. But S- Sakai looked pretty good in moments. It's just we saw. Uh, Sakai, I, I don't know the last time he fought in a five-round fight, if ever. Uh, I'll have to look at the numbers. It might have been before UFC. Um, but those championship rounds are serious. They are serious. And when you're facing a guy like Overeem, again, this was fight number 66. And we're just, just talking about MMA, not kickboxing. Pro MMA bout number 66. He's seen it all. He's seen everything. He's fought every style. He's fought every body type. He's fought people older than him. He's fought people younger than him. Um, so he's not going to panic if he if he gets down a little early on the cards. You know, there, he cut, it was a little bit of a rope dope. You know, you don't see that a lot in MMA, especially when uh, Herb Dean is the ref. You, that rope dope might end up in the fight being stopped. So you got to be careful. But I think Overeem was so smart. I think he's again he's a veteran of the game. He knew exactly how to make it look as he was on defense and not get hurt. And let Sakai gas himself out, which he did. And and uh, Sakai again, not quite on the on the level for rounds four and five. So, just a classy, classy veteran performance for uh, Alistair <laughs> Overton. So, I mean, as you can tell by the background, I'm not in Command Center 2.0. I'm actually in Boston at my parents' house, and I was watching the fights with my little brother. And like in the fourth round, he says to me, looking at Augusto Sakai, like all bloody and and kind of battered. He's like, oh man, he's thinking to himself, why did I choose? to agree to fight five rounds because he was just like, oh, I just, I, I don't really want to be here anymore. But, you know, gutsy performance on his end. Jose, what did you think? Alistair Overeem's been doing this for a long time. He's, like we said in the previous show, he's got like 17,000 professional fights at this point, and he just keeps doing the damn thing. What did you make of the 40-year-old's performance tonight? Well, it's it's very reminiscent of his last performance against Walt Harris. I mean, we talked about it on the preview show. Like, if, if they stopped that fight, uh, Overeem and Walt Harris in Jacksonville. When Walt Harris was raining bombs down Overeem, I don't think any of us would have complained about the stoppage. It was that dominant. But Overeem withstood the violence, literally hit the switch, like like the wrestling move, and then took top position and then finished it out with ground and pound. So that's pretty much exactly what happened in this fight. Uh, it wasn't a switch, but like once Overeem got on top, uh, what was around four, he and he, he sliced him open, and it, you really saw that was where this the the the, the it turned, and then he got on top again. Uh, and he was throwing uh, some serious, uh, like, like Donkey Kong punches, but he was throwing also, like, elbows to the body. So it's not like he was just unloading to the head and blowing. He was picking his shots and picking them perfectly. You don't see a lot of elbows to the body on when, the, you're, when you're on top. Uh, so it just shows another an a- a- aspect of Overeem's game that's just, it's just veteranship. And, uh, yeah, he definitely lost the first two rounds in mine. I had it, I just wrote, like, 10-9, 10-9, and then you could argue that he, like, Overeem won the third round, but uh, it seems like Overeem was throwing these one hard punches, like one kick to the body, one punch, one elbow, and Sakai was just unloading on combinations like left, right, left, right, leg kick, like uppercut, clinch up and throw a bunch, and Overeem was biding his time, saving his energy, because he knew if he took it to the canvas, this fight would be hit, this fight would be his to win, and that's exactly what happened. He conserved energy, withstood the onslaught, because yeah, he got hit a lot, but it's not like he was all gashed up. He was blocking a lot of the punches, and yeah, he, he might have eaten a few of those because some of them uh, slipped in. But Sakai, I, he, I don't want to say he blew his gas, but Overeem definitely took over when they hit the championship rounds. And like, like I agree with your brother. If that was three rounds, Sakai wins, but Overeem withstood the onslaught first three and came back and won, and that's exactly what he did in, in the Walt Harris fight. So props to Overeem for the gamesmanship and the veteranship, and uh, it's the better man won tonight. As most of you probably know by now, and if you haven't, make sure you jump on board. AK and I will be talking all things matchmaking on Monday morning on the podcast network, so make sure you subscribe so you can check those out. But uh, Casey, let me ask you this. I mean, you've been covering Alistair Overeem for a long time. You, uh, I would assume he, yeah. he's a guy that's sort of right up your alley when it comes to fighters that you watch and that you enjoy and that you have a, a ton of respect for. I think we have all have a ton of respect for Alistair Overeem at this point, but... What would you like to see next for him in this crazy world and this crazy heavyweight division? Derek Lewis. He's fighting somebody. He's fighting Curtis Blades. Scratch that fight. <laughs> Why? Come on. It's like to, to me, like wasn't Derek Lewis all over Twitter tonight, just um, yeah. just bagging on over him? That's the fight to make. Uh, yeah, I don't think they're gonna take a fight away from Blades to give it to his uh, teammate. Yeah, as the but, I mean, um. Maybe. 
If Overeem's fighting main events versus Sakai, I mean, they can put him against anybody. I mean, um, Overeem, Overeem is such a prize fighter. As long as, as long as the check clears, he'll fight his grandma. You know what I mean? Like it, that's so. I think for Overeem, he really doesn't care. I'm sure he wants whoever's gonna pay him the most. So uh, I mean, if it's John, like he, like if it's John Jones, who knows? John Jones. I mean, it could be a lot of things. Uh, I doubt it'd be John Jones. I mean, I think John Jones is either getting Francis or Stipe or Brock. But uh, I mean. Overeem's in a good position right now. That's all, and he can face anybody, uh, any, any, any high, de any, any decent name. Yeah, I mean, if, if for some reason like Blades can't make it to the to the Lewis mm -hmm. fight, I mean, it makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Overeem trains with him already. Yeah. He likes Colorado, and boom, we could just slide him right in there. We got ourselves a fight. But uh, Jose, what do you think? If uh, if all things kind of play as they are schedule wise. What is I, what is next for Overeem? I like the John Jones fight. I've always wanted to see those two fight, especially when uh, Overeem was in Strike Force and John was kind of on the rise. Like those, that fight, I, in my mind, was always a future fight. I mean, we I've been asking Overeem about John Jones since right when he joined the UFC. Uh, I do agree with Casey. Like I would want to watch the Derek Lewis fight. I think the heat is there, but Curtis Blades also has a lot of heat with Derek Lewis. Uh, so if they if that fight, if they want to keep that fight, fine. Uh, there's not a lot of people for Overeem to fight that's, that are coming off wins. Like, if they want to rematch him against Jairzinho, especially because he was, like, four seconds away from beating Jairzinho, fine. Uh, I also don't mind the Alexander Volkov fight because they were scheduled to fight before, uh, in I think it was the St. Petersburg, one of the Moscow cards or something like that, uh, and Volkov pulled out and Alexio Linux uh, slotted right in. You know Volkov doesn't want to fight another wrestler again. He's really going to want to fight a striker. And Overeem is a striker, and he is showing a lot of wrestling in, in wrestling. But it's not like he's Curtis Blaze where he's just drowning you for 25 minutes. So either one of those fights is fine. But like Casey said, as long as the check clears, Overeem will yeah. fight anyone. Uh, so literally just take a dart and throw it in the heavyweight division. Awesome. But if it was up to me, I like the John Jones fight, the Jairzinho fight, or the Volkov fight. So Overeem's check for his victory tonight will clear. Mm -hmm. However, he will not receive an extra check. He did not receive a bonus tonight. We'll get through all the bonuses in a second. But one man who did get a bonus was Ovin St. Pru in the co-main event. He violently knocks out Alonzo Menafield. And it was crazy. He was on What the Heck this week, and he pretty much called it to a T. Like everyone, the general consensus surrounding the fight was, if it stays in the feet, it's Menafield. If it goes to the ground, you know, St. Pru will probably Von Pru him and, and submit him. And he said basically, like, remember the Shogun fight, Mike, when he was on What the Heck? Like, and the result of the fight ended, like, almost exactly how the Shogun fight ended. It was, like, a similar blow and everything. AK, one thing that really surprised me in this fight was the Lions. He was the underdog heading in. His 39th professional fight, Ovin St. Pru is the underdog against a guy with 10 professional fights, albeit a very powerful guy in Alonzo Menafield. A, were you surprised with the odds? And B, were you surprised how the fight played out? Yeah, I, I didn't know what the odds were until they mentioned it on the broadcast. I was surprised to hear that uh, OSP was the underdog. Um, look, we all we all love sort of uh, prospects who are unknown properties. But it wasn't like the, the loss of Devin Clark that um, Alonzo Menafield had in the fight prior to this one. It wasn't like you watched that fight and it's like, oh, like it was a fluke. Like there were some fundamental things that, you know, a guy with only 10 fights under his belt. Uh, it, 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 that they're gonna, those are the weaknesses they're gonna show. There's very tangible things. Now you could, you know, you could assume, oh well, he's gonna make a big leap from that. It's the kind of loss you learn from, and I'm sure he did, and it's why he probably lasted as long as he did against against OSP. But, but the experience gap is just huge. Um, this was uh, Metafield's fourth UFC fight and Saint Prue's 22nd. So that's a bit, and, and, and again, and when you think about the names that Saint Prue has fought, I mean, it's he doesn't, it's not just the experience, it's but he's fought guys at such a high level. That to think a, a prospect like Menafield so unproven would just walk through him is, is just absurd. Um, OSP, and by the way, you know, you mentioned how similar was the show. I mean, really, I think, I feel like the, the, the skateboard also made it all the way from Brazil somehow to the UFC Apex in Las Vegas. I swear I saw that skateboard slide in there and get right under right under poor Menafield and, and he ended up falling right in his face. Um, but uh, that's now five KOs in the UFC and six submissions for uh, OSP. He is now tied Grover Teixeira for the uh, most finishes with 11 uh, in the UFC light heavyweight division, and uh, I think increased his own lead for uh, most light heavyweight subs. I'm including this one catchweight bout in there. So and uh, so six. Oh, sorry, he didn't increase it. I'm sorry, but he also has the record for most subs. So uh, OSP, he's been around and pretty spectacular still. <laughs> he feels good right now. He said uh, weight wise, he felt better than he did two weeks ago before he got pulled due to the, the positive COVID test. So big win for OSP. What did you think of his performance, Jose? Because he looked pretty damn good tonight. 
he looks really, really good, but also at the same time, just felt like Minifield was like stuck against the fence. Like I do, he just wasn't doing anything. Like I was going, I did the Twitter reacts for the site, and they were all, "Why is Minifield stuck on the fence? Why isn't he doing anything? Why isn't he throwing combinations? Why is he doing X, Y, Z?" So it was a lot of fighters complaining about what Minifield wasn't doing, rather than what OSP was doing, which isn't always fair because OSP looked awesome. He was just picking apart. He had that. He was just unloading with the body kick in the middle. He was just uh, eating him up with those leg kicks and the straight kicks to the body. And then when Alonzo Minifield tried to do something, OSP put him to sleep. So it just shows you how much you have to respect Ovin St. Preux's striking and power because, yeah, he has all these submission wins, but he can also put you to bed, just like he told you on what the heck. So uh, awesome, awesome performance for Ovin St. Preux. I, I have a few ideas of where he could go from here, but also at the same time, Medfield didn't do a whole lot. He basically just stood there circling with his back to the fence the whole time, just getting chewed up, and Ovin St. Preux did what he should have done and took advantage of it. So I don't think it's fair for people to be complaining what Menfield didn't do because Ovin St. Preux looked absolutely phenomenal because he was doing so well that Menfield was just lost. He did everything he, I think he wanted to do. He couldn't. So props to OSP for putting in putting Menfield in such an uncomfortable position that he literally just couldn't fight. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought the game plan was, was picture perfect. I mean, he used his length extremely well. He knew he was going to have to eat some some heavy shots early on. He did. You know, OSP's kicking game is on point. He kept going to the body, and those are adding up. And the, uh, the the straight left hand was a huge weapon for him. Like I think DC even said, he goes, he uses it like a jab. But, man, he looked great. Big win for OSP. Curious what the viewers think about OSP's next move. He said he's not opposed to going back up to heavyweight if the fight is right. But now that John Jones is no longer the champion and things have kind of opened up at 205, he's pretty interested. And he's kind of got a, a little reinvigoration, if you will, uh, at his light heavyweight career. But... Casey, what do you think? What would you like to see next for OSP after that big win tonight? Yeah, it's, it's, it's it feels weird saying OSP title contender again. It just feels odd to even think that. But you got to, I mean, just who am I thinking? Um, yeah, just someone in the top ten. I mean, this fight was a weird fight in general. I mean, I, just even being booked. And, um, uh, man, but OSP looked good. Um just someone in the top 10. I mean, uh, like I said, if it's, it seems just wide open right now, you know, the light heavyweight division. So, um, I, I don't really think there's a really like you go, Oh, OSP versus this guy. I don't think there's really, I think you just want to see OSP back in there again. And, um, just maybe this is a new OSP after, you know, going up to heavyweight, just a different guy, man. But, but going back to the actual fight, like, I mean, I, I want to give OSP so much credit, man, but there were moments in that fight where Minifield just like, I know, I know guys have off nights, and maybe maybe he had a bad weight cut, but, man, I, I swear, there was a good 90 seconds where I don't think he threw a punch. No, yeah. Was, was there, there were moments in that fight. Yeah, like there was just, the, that was what I was saying. Like, a lot of, when I was doing Twitter reacts, a lot of his fellow fighters were saying, why isn't he doing anything? It was, they were complaining about but then But then when he tried to do something, OSP put him to sleep. But it was just, I mean, I, I know y'all, we're going to be positive as a great performance, great knockout, you know, the classic left hand from OSP. But, man, I thought Minifield was just – that was just – he had a bad night. He was just very off tonight. I don't know if it was a bad weight cut, just something going on outside the cage. But, uh, you know, fighters show up. Sometimes they, they're on, sometimes they're off. And I, I just felt Minifield just was not there tonight. Maybe – I mean, made that big weight cut, getting, getting hyped for a fight, doing it again two weeks later. Was it two weeks? Yeah. Yeah. OSP being the veteran just has more experience in this. There's no, there's, there's no more jitters in that sense, you know. But um, it was it was it was an odd it was a very odd performance from Minifield. I was um I was I was I was um disappointed. But um, yeah, I think I mean I think obviously the UFC sees something in him. They keep putting him in these spots, fighting in Devin Clark and then fighting in OSP. And I know, oh, Minifield wasn't the original opponent for OSP. I forget who it was, but he slid in there, and then the fight was made, and and here we are. But you know, maybe give him a step back at this point. I, I think like the winner maybe. I mean, Ed Herman's a veteran, but I think like kind of where they where they're at in their careers. I know Ed Herman's fighting Mike Rodriguez, maybe the winner of that. I don't know. I have You're to talking about for OSP. No, for Metafield oh, moving forward. Okay. OSP, I got to think about a little bit more. But I got a few. I got three possible scenarios for OSP, and they Let's all make sense. So <laughs> either he does the, either if he wants top ten, he does the rubber match with Nikita Krylov. They both one on one, both with submission wins. 
Uh, one of them was that Von Flew choke, and the other one was Krylov got revenge with the rear naked choke. Um, they could do they could do the rematch with Vulcan Ozdemir because the first time they fought, uh, Vulcan was brand new, last minute opponent. Uh, uh, OSP was on a two fight losing skin, coming off a violent knockout loss to Jimmy Manua. Now the tables are turned. Vulcan Ozdemir is coming off a violent knockout loss to Jerry Prohaska. If they want to give OSP uh, i do him a favor for taking that initial fight and they run it back again. I wouldn't hate that fight either. And then the third one, uh, the winner of Shogun Paul Craig, because they tried to rebook Shogun versus Ovin St. Prue. I think it was on that Japan card before when then Shogun pulled out and Yushin Okami slid in and OSP tapped him with a Von Flew choke. Paul Craig sitting at 15. Uh, if he, and obviously that first fight was like a, it was a draw or something like that. So I think either the winner is Shogun Craig, and I think Shogun will win. They can finally book that rematch against OSP or OSP rematches Vulcan Ozdemir give after their first fight when OSP stayed on that Manchester card. And that was also uh, Vulcan's first win. And then he went on that run of stoppages. And like, remember, it was like in 12 months, all of a sudden he was fighting for a title. The first win was against OSP. Or they could do the rubber match with Nikita Krylov. Any of those fights make sense. They're all top 15 fighters. Uh, and if Ovin St. Prue really wants to get back in title contention, I think any one of those. Uh, would be a fun fight. So you suggested three rematches, huh? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> one ru- one rubber match and three rematches. Two rematches. That's how long yeah, OSP has been I, around. The fact that he's had so many storylines like, with different guys. Yeah. Fight, like Anthony Smith would be fun, but I think Anthony Smith's going to take time off. Misha Shirkinoff is fun. Like Johnny Walker has a fight booked already. Ryan Spahn, unless you want to give him the winner of Walker and Ryan Spahn. But I just think OSP has done these UFC so many favors, like to fighting John Jones on short notice, fighting a no-name, like, uh, at the time, Vulcan Ozdemir on short notice, and then he decapitates Corey Anderson in Madison Square Garden. I think, give him a, give him another show. Also, those are all fights that they've tried to book, and they've fallen out a lot of times. Yeah. Well, I, 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 got, I got a fresh matchup for you, which you kind of mentioned him, but I think, and I think this is a guy who we've all done a bit of fantasy matchmaking for over the last, uh, last few weeks. Uh, you know, if they were going to put him in there with a guy who's only had three UFC fights, why not put OSP in there with a guy who's only had one UFC fight? Oh, don't you do it. How about him? Why can't he get the Yuri Prochaska fight? Because that's Alexander Ratchik's fight. I don't like that fight. I'm just saying. it could have, You're talking about going to give him a reward. I'm just, that's, that's, it's possible. It's possible. Again, we've, I, know we've, I think we've matched up Yuri with a lot of guys on, on whatever, various shows, A-side and post-fight shows. On, on to the next one, I'm like, sure. Jerry and Alexander Ratchik are like 5'6", and then the others, all the, all the people above him are booked ahead of him. I like that fight more. I just want to see 22 UFC fights, or yeah, 22 UFC fights versus one. I just want to see like, because because again, we're <laughs> it's weird because we're criticizing the meta field uh, matchup and rightfully so. And yet, the, but but yet the Yuri one would make it just it just makes sense. Uh, but the experience level as well, it would it would be I'm you know it'd be uh, perhaps because 32nd pro fight. So obviously we're you know there, there's there's that real uh, it lines up a little bit better in that sense. Yes. The, um... There was no fight of the night bonus. If there was, it was definitely the main event. But uh, all performance bonuses. We talked about OSP. Brian Kelleher gets his third bonus of 2020. This guy's year has just been unbelievable. Uh, Munez gets a gets himself a bonus as well after that slick submission. But AK, I think I'm going to allow you this time <laughs> to wax poetic about a man oh. that you've been singing his praises for a while. The other man who got a performance bonus... Michelle Pereira gets mm-hmm. a big win. Wax poetic. What did you think of his performance, and, and how did you feel when it was over? His performance was wonderful. I will say I'm a little surprised that they would give him a bonus for a, uh, a stoppage that was unquestionably controversial. Uh, he dominated the fight anyway. I, I don't think anyone's going to argue that he was on his way. It was literally with, I think, 30, uh, tw- what, 29 seconds at uh, the 29 second mark left less, of, less than a of round five. Less than a uh, of round three, sorry. Less than a minute. So he was going to win anyway by decision. Uh, he may have even finished the choke. We don't know. But Imadai was super tough. I, I think that it, I thought Imadai was on his way to, again, fighting the hands and probably making it to the end of the round. So very strange call by uh, referee Chris Tyone. I'm really not sure what he saw. Some people said it looked like Imadai's fist might have hit the mat. I didn't. I, I saw that, but that's not a tap in my opinion. Uh, he went to fight the hands and people said maybe they thought that was a tap. It was a really, really not a great stoppage, uh, unfortunately. So I was surprised. Uh, good for, I still think he deserves a bonus because, you know, I, I always think performance should encapsulate not just the finish, but the performance, the actual performance itself. And it was certainly probably the best we've seen of uh, of him outside of maybe the Danny Roberts one. But as far as a more complete performance, yeah, there's a lot of questions about him. How serious is he? Is he more than just tricks? He had a lot of substance today in addition to the style and just completely dominated Emma Dive, who, again, is a pr- pretty good striker. 
and could not figure out Pereira today. So uh, really good stuff from Demolador. Hopefully there's not so much controversy around this finish that we potentially see a no contest, which is something uh, that we were discussing before the show. But it would be very uh, Michel Pereira thing of his UFC career for that to happen. Yeah, it'd be, I mean... I, I mean, I understand why you could do that. Like rule set wise, you probably should do that. Yeah. But I, I think I, I think that's probably gonna be a tough sell at this point. Casey, think you, of all you, the think of all the stuff they've never overturned. Think of all the right. stuff they've never overturned, and they overturned this. Come on, let's not do this. On this card, like this, after what happened throughout the day in the last 24 hours, good lord. Yeah, that'd be that'd be pretty crazy. Uh, like we said, Muniz got a, got a submission win. Brian Kelleher, 39 seconds, gets it done over Ray Rodriguez, who took the fight last night. So less than 24 hours notice, Ray Rodriguez found out that he was fighting. Uh, Viviani Araujo defeats Montana de, Montana de la Rosa. The, the commentating in that fight was bizarre, and I thought Super de la Rosa's bizarre. game plan was kind of bizarre, too. Um, I'm, I'm glad to see that her striking game has evolved a little bit going over to Elevation Fight Team, but... Didn't really agree with the with the game plan at all, but it is what it is. Araujo's back in the win column, and then Hunter Azure kicked off the night uh, with a win over Cole Smith. So, pretty fun card overall. Short and sweet, just the way we like it. But uh, let's go to the peeps. Ready? Let's see what the peeps have to say? Yeah, the let's peeps. get let's get after yeah. this thing. This is the people's post fight show. I, I saw oh. a question specifically aimed at Jose and I. I don't know if you saw it, uh, Casey from Zach Herder. Oh, uh, we have so many comments. How am I gonna find them? I don't know if you saw it. Can I can I just can I just yeah, yeah. shout it out? Yeah, shout it. Uh, Zach or Zeke Herder? Sorry, yeah, it's, it's, I agree. It's, it's way up there. It's hard to find. Uh, Jose, they were just asking about Brian Kelleher, your boy. Mm-hmm. Um, does he need a bigger step up in competition? Uh, and we should say, by the way, he was going to fight Ricky Simone tonight. Who's, yeah. who's I don't know if you call that a massive step up in competition, but certainly uh, I would say a worthy. Uh, it made sense for me matchup wise, yeah. and of course ended up fighting a, a late notice replacement, Ray Rodriguez, who he he handles, uh, and got a nice fifty thousand dollar bonus, eh? Mm-hmm. For <laughs> for it's his so third they, it's his third bonus in twenty twenty. He should toss maybe he should toss maybe a little bit of that money to Ray Rodriguez, otherwise you know for for, for letting that happen. But uh, Jose, would you like to break down why you before we answer the question of what's next for Frank Keller? Would you like to break down why you think Keller has had such good fortune this year? I, I can't imagine. I honestly can't imagine. I don't know. I can't figure it out. I mean. I don't have to tell you about the scientific <laughs> results, right? Like, if you look at the scientific method, you have a hypothesis, the experiment, the outcome, then you compare. So he's had how many fights in 2024? Yeah. And how many has he won? Three. And how many bones does he have? Three. Where did it all start? January. What was he given in January? That's right. Tiger's Eye Crystal, which increases monetary gain. And now that's three wins, three bonuses. So, like, I don't have to tell you what the scientific formula is. It happened again. There you go. That's the answer right there. But, yeah, I like – I just want them to rebook the Ricky Simone fight. Uh, I think Brian Keller <laughs> went through so much this week. Uh, like, three, like, <laughs> opponent, like, the – like, the, he stared down with opponent and then didn't even end up fighting him. So, as, as Jessica Crystal Crew wants to say, Alex, of course, believes now. Mm-hmm. Don't lie because he believes in the scientific formula. And all that stuff. So, yeah, 100%. Uh, the crystal worked again. Uh, but I want, I want the Ricky Simone fight, 100%. I think, that, I think that's the fight to make. Brian Keller even said, like, the Sean O'Malley fight that he's called for so long no longer has the mystique, and he wants the Ricky Simone fight. So just book it again, except uh, not on Fight Island. Jessica, I do not believe. Uh, I just teed it up for Jose because I would rather see it coming than walk into a crystal rant. Hopefully, and, and I just want to get it out of the way. So I know there's no stopping him anyway. Uh, so there we go. That, there is your crystal content for tonight. Um, but I agree with uh, Kelleher. Yeah, it's just I think Ricky Simone's next thing. 2021, I think, is when we'll see Kelleher. If he beats Ricky Simone, really knocking on that, that top 10 ranking door. And we're missing some monetary stuff as well. Yes. And we're, first of all, shout out to Kelleher for coming out to Stone Cold Steve Austin's theme, which Woo! on the broadcast that he's I watched the, on ESPN Plus, leaned, I didn't see the damn entrance. He so leaned, right, in, get here, he's leaned right into that baldy head. Uh, persona that Darren Till bestowed on him. I don't know if you watched an interview with Darren Till on the Mac Life. He get, he's even giving Brian Kelleher shout outs for his social media game. So uh, when Darren Till gives you a shout out for what, your persona on social media, you know you're doing something right. Yeah, and uh, that January fight, it was Kelleher's last fight on his deal. So yeah. that submission earned him a brand new contract. I'm sure he got some more money. And he's already fought three out of the four fights. So he's on his last fight in his deal. I find it hard to believe the UFC is not just going to lock him up and say, yeah. let's just let's just renegotiate now, get you a new deal, and get you a Ricky Simone fight. So he's making more money 
every single day at this point. So good on him. What a crazy week it was for him. He thought Natividad was out, then false positives. He's back in. They weigh in. They stare down. And then Ray Rodriguez gets in at the 11th hour and, and props to Ray Rodriguez. Ray's been grinding on the regional scene for a long time. So happy to see that he got his opportunity. And hopefully he gets to stick around and get a fight with I, the full training camp. Why, why I would just book him against Navidad. Yeah. Both Brian Kelleher's opponents that like his opponent fell out. He replaced him. I just booked that fight. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Also, what was this? Was this Kelleher's like 30 something pro fight? Like we're talking about Overeem having a million fight. Like Kelleher has that yeah. has like double digit losses, but also he has like 20 plus wins. He's a gangster. Good on him. I mean, it's just just crazy thing. Like a lot of other fighters just be like, nah, uh, I'll just fight. Let's rebook the fight in like a couple weeks. But he's just like, nah, screw it. Let's just go. And, and he got done 39 seconds. He might fight in the next like three weeks. Who the hell knows at this point? But not on Fight Island. He doesn't seem to have any interest in that. So uh, what else we got? Yes, the Stone Cold thing was awesome. <laughs> Let's talk about Michelle uh, Burr's call out. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. <laughs> hey, hey, I don't write these questions. I don't. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just a messenger. I'm just a messenger. What's better just call out the biggest waste ever? I, I need context, but like, why would it be a? Wh- how do you frame that call out as a waste? I'm confused. Someone, someone, help me. What's wasteful? What's wasteful about it? All right, well, let me let, let me let me flip the question to you, AK. I mean, you're you're perhaps you know number one guy. You're a advocate. You're advocate. an advocate. <laughs> you're advocate. like what Paul Heyman is to Brock Lesnar exactly. when it comes to Michelle Pereira. Exactly. Yes. Why was it not a waste? It's a big name. It's it, it it's it's so much better than people come out. God bless Sean Brady. We were talking about this last week. Sean Brady said, I want a big name. He said it four times, like his post-fight speech. Up next for me should be a big name. I just want a big name. I think it's time for a big name. Without naming anyone. Again, and I'm not saying Michelle Pereira gets this fight. It's it's highly unlikely he does anyway. I, but you've got to speak these things into existence. Uh, I hadn't even thought about this as a possible matchup until he said it. And I, again, I, if I'm Masvidal, I, I mean, I don't take it. Why would you do this? But you have to... like. He's got to at least hear about it. I mean, I feel like he, he, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make his way to him. Maybe he, he does some pity tweet, and that's as far as it goes. But I really want to see that fight now. I think a lot of people want to see that fight. And, and again, if, if it ends up being something that people demand and that, that can produce, you know, draw eyeballs for Jorge Masvidal, it's, it's like 10 times as compelling as the Nate Diaz fight, isn't it? Like, what's, what are we talking about here? Waste. Why wouldn't Masvidal take it? You think you, is he scared? You think he's, you think he's scared, Alex? I did, you think no, he's scared? I, no, I did not say you, yeah, I you did say, not you say, say that. Not gonna, yeah. You, you, you just that. called Gamebred a coward. That's why I heard. I would never do that. Don't tweet that. Don't <laughs> tweet that. <laughs> Don't tweet. No social, guys. No social. No social. I, I wouldn't say it was, a, it was a waste, but you could tell, like, it was... It didn't really take... I don't even think, like, even Michelle Perheta, like, took the call out that seriously. He just shot his shot. He had a big smile on his face. He just used a moment, to, and he knew people were going to talk about it. So I thought oh. it was intelligent in one way, but completely unrealistic i don't know like that was i actually think that was calculated though i think like that he that yeah. he definitely was planning to oh you're great you know he was definitely planning to do that if you want yeah yeah he knew twitter was gonna blow up and be like oh my god guess <laughs> what he just did guess who he just called out mazadal and got everybody talking so in that sense it was a good move but that fight is not happening so what's the next Anytime. what's the next fight what's the clip next that platform? clip that can we, can we clip that audio for when this fight gets booked this is <laughs> yeah. that Timestamp, timestamp. Okay, hold on. I got it. Timestamp. Okay. Well, I mean, maybe you know, maybe end of next year. Maybe who knows? Things things might happen. You'll have to find out Monday. My choice on oh, Michelle Pereira. Oh, okay. I think that's gonna I be. Like, uh, I like a Randy Brown or Alan Joban fight. Those are oh. two names that aren't ranked, and at least they have people will recognize them. Yeah, Casey disagrees with everything that makes sense. <laughs> he just wants dumb fights. Um, but I whatever. I don't really care. Everyone, someone tweeted Kazmat Shemayev too. I'm like, I'm not gonna not. I'm not gonna say no to that, but it's not gonna happen. <laughs> Uh, by the way, who, and whoever you know, the matchmakers putting him in there with Imadayev, perfect. That was like that was like the absolute best guy to put him in I there. Just, with, uh, yeah. I want it. We've seen what he can do against like smaller welterweights. I think a long, rangy fighter like Randy Brown will answer questions. Uh, and then Alan Joban is just a name who has been proven that he can get hit. So if you want to fight that, will add another highlight. Like Alan Joban, a. It's very impressive. Trains at Kings MMA. He's a really good fighter. Has that win over Mike Perry. Uh, and not, now everyone wants that fight. So mm-hmm. I think that those two names are fine with me. He could sell I'm the bl- fight, too. I think Jamaica yeah. could sell the fight. 100%. Really do a good job the fight. Anyone that's in fashion magazines with Gigi Hadid <laughs> yes. can sell a fight. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned Mike Perry because it seems like every week at this point when a welterweight fights on a card <laughs> and a welterweight gets a victory, it's always, oh, he should fight Mike Perry next. Like, Mike Perry, we don't know when he's coming back at this point. Like, we don't know when that's happening. He's got himself into a little bit of a pickle here with the law, so we don't know when he's coming back. 
Like the UFC has said, where until he completes a, a program, they're not even going to book him a fight. So right. let's let's not match him up with my, anybody up with Mike Perry yet until like we get the go ahead that we can start matching people up. But I would love. I know Nico Price is fighting Donald Cerrone, but Nico Price versus Michelle Perry would be redonkulous. I would love the winner of that. Like you're going to say, no, yes. Cowboy fighting him. Yeah, that'll that would be great too. There we go. Done and done. We just made that happen. What do you want? What's your pick? What's your fight, Casey? Michelle Pereira versus Robbie Lawler. We can move on now. Yeah, I just want. I think I want Robbie Lawler to fight mm-hmm. Mike Perry. And if Mike Perry's going to be out for a while, then Robbie Lawler. Mike Perry out for a while. is not a good citizen of this world right now. So I don't know if nope. he needs to be cage fight right giving, now. Mike, so uh, why giving Rob- let's give let's get Robbie Lawler a nice big paycheck and. Um, that's a co-main event on a uh, fight night, or um, you know, a, a nice pay-per-view main card somewhere. You know. Yeah. But, uh, if 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 Pereira's antics can't bring out the best in Robbie Lawler, then truly, then truly, we have seen the last of like. That's what I mean. Robbie Lawler. We, we need right, someone yeah. that's gonna bring out that. Yeah. That Robbie Lawler that we've that we love, not the Robbie Lawler mm-hmm. we see now, because we know it's in there. We see it. It's in his eyes still. You see it in his eyes. But I think Michelle Pereira is that guy that can bring that Robbie Lawler out. Him and Brady would be interesting. I, I mean, would be a fun I, fight. That, that would be, because I don't know if we call like Pereira like a, a a prospect at this point. Like it's he's no. beyond that. He's had so yeah. much experience. So that'd be interesting. Although Brady wants to fight Robbie Lawler himself. <laughs> uh, what's next for Viviani Araujo? She looked good coming off the Jessica I loss, which everybody thought she was going to win, and that was kind of a total letdown. But it seemed like she but Jessica she I also came in like thirty pounds over today. too. Remember. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, and she, it was just uh, one of those performances that kind of just put her in a really good spot, but she took a couple of steps back. and uh, But she looked good against Montana tonight. So, Jose, what do you want to see next for Araujo? Uh, who, Andrew Lee's fighting Roxy, right, yeah. if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken. I think the winner of that makes sense. What They're all like, what, 7, 8, 9, 10? Some, they're all like right in that bubble. Uh, unless Macy Barber wants to come back. If she's back from her knee injury, sure, why not? Um, Alexa Grasso looks awesome at flyweight. So if they want to book that fight, like I just I like, like that. that. Yeah. I like that fight as a fight. Like I don't know if Vivian Arujo wants to take a step back in the rankings. That's up to her. But like I like that fight just as a high level martial arts competition. Like those two just don't stop moving forward, throwing combinations. And then uh, I think Julian Robertson somewhere in there too. Molly McCann some. I, she might not be top fifteen, but there's a lot of fights for Vivian Arujo to take. But selfishly, I want the Alexa Grasso fight or the winner of Roxy Andrew. Or if she wants a fight that will move her higher up the rankings, the winner of Roxy Andrea Lee. Yeah. What do you think, AK? Well, no, we're saving that, AK. Casey, what do you think? <laughs> oh, I, okay. <laughs> we're saving. We're saving. We're saving. Watch the show yeah. Monday. Watch, watch the show. show. Uh, no, I, I like the I like the Grasso fight. Um, even though Grasso might not be in front of her ranking wise, I think name value wise, um, that's the fight for um, Vivian if she wants to get a bigger name out there. Because um, I think Grasso's also- got a even though despite her ranking, just because she's new to the division, I think uh, yeah, I think that's a fight to make. And it, but Barbara's also a great fight, but I'm not sure Barbara's um, her timeline right now. But yeah, uh, and I think Grasso is just one of the more exciting female fighters out there in terms of what happens inside the octagon. Like, she's never in boring fights. No. Like, even that Carlos Barza fight that she lost was awesome. Yeah. And then her fight it against was very Taylor close, too. Very close, yeah. It was super close. Yeah. Like, I thought Grasso had won that fight. Yeah. But I, I, Arguably. There's, it's, not, it's not a robbery. Yeah. It's not a robbery review candidate for AK Lee. But uh, any of the... So, I want that fight selfishly. <sighs> okay, was yeah, it just me? Fight. But during, during the... Uh, Ara- How do you say her last name again? Arajo? Arujo? Arujo. Arujo. Arujo, sorry. Arujo fight, God, I just wanted her to throw a combination. She was throwing those freaking yeah. jabs that were just destroying um, the Rosa. But it's like, mm-hmm. oh, follow it up with something. I was just like, I was like, mm. but um, but she it's looked like, great. Yeah, she looked it was great. Like a but I was just, jab and then like a leg kick. Like yeah. that was like her bread and butter for 15 rounds. It was, and, then, and it was working, but. Just, and if you but if you listen to the commentary, it was a super close fight, which I oh, don't agree. With at and all. and De La Rosa's corner apparently, I I did yeah, not hear this. I, I saw people mentioning on social media. Uh, De La Rosa's corner going to the third said, "This is a close fight. You just got to take this one," which is not great advice. I mean, I I, I guess tell her to keep fighting hard. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think they should have been a little more 
realistic about it. I don't know what difference it would have made because I do feel like in the stand up she was just outclassed. But that advice is very strange. Maybe they could hear the commentary too. That could have been the, we, are about, we are talking about Apex here, right? Maybe they heard the yeah. commentary like, oh, it's close. Listen, you know, we can hear DC, we can hear Anik. And, um, so yeah, definitely one of those unique circumstances that we only see uh, in the UFC Apex during these times. You know, I don't Next want to. I, I don't want to go out. Also. Don't want to go off on a giant rant, but like, open scoring. If they wouldn't, if, if De La Rosa, if her corner gone like, you are down two rounds, you have to knock this lady out. That's exciting. But basically, the corner's like, you got to win this round. It's like, no, you got to finish yeah. her. That, that, she was fighting pretty hard, though. I do feel like De La Rosa, even to the end, was really getting in there. For someone who was clearly being like out- outclassed, she really kept getting in there. I don't know if, how much more she could have gone out of for some, mm-hmm. for some knockouts. Some fighters don't have that in them, that kind of wild flurry. It's just not what they do, right? They, they have a discipline. They have a game plan. And you're in there. You're, you're kind of an autopilot. You stick to it. So uh, this is, again, this is just me crapping on open scoring, by the way, because you brought it up. But, no, <laughs> like, I'm not even... Next week's headliner, Angela Hill, was like, what is the commentator commentators talking about? Like, this is yeah. not a close fight. And then <laughs> speaking on what Casey said, though, or when when the, the fight, like, their corner, the corner work and everything, like, Augusto Sakai's, I, I had him up 2-0. I think a lot of people had him up 2-0. His corner said, you prob- you might have lost that first round, so we're going to, it's 1-1. Second round, I think, but yeah. Second round. They were like, you probably lost. It's 1-1 in our minds right now, though. So the opposite of what Montana De La Rosa's corner said. Yeah, I mean, I thought there's no. I don't think Montana won any of the rounds. I mean, second why. round, second round. Once you started throwing kicks, it changed the it changed the you know a little bit of the shape of the fight. Like it got a little more competitive. Like Arujo still won the round. I mean, you could just look at their faces. You could tell like the damage that was being compiled. But you know, Del Rose is tough as nails. Yeah. So yeah, got to give her credit for that. The uh, the live significant strike stats at the end of the fight actually made it look really close. Oh, by the way, thank you for the question, Kent Thuson. Uh, I think it was like 78-74, which again, I don't think reflects how close the fight actually was. Uh, and I think when the official stats come out, by the way, on Monday or whenever those those stats are compiled, I have a feeling that significant stri- those significant strike numbers are not going to look as close uh, as we saw in the broadcast. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but that that's uh, they they can waver greatly from the on-screen stats uh, when you see them. So I think Arjun won that one uh, comfortably. Oh, we have uh, we have some royalty here. The ambassador of trance <laughs> asks, explain Overeem's oh durability, fighting at his age, having been knocked out himself many times. How is he still mentally sharp and successful? Is he just a freak of nature? Uh, AK, I'll let you tackle this one since we can't make any matchups here. Yeah, I mean it's. I think freak of nature describes a lot of a lot of uh, <laughs> high level athletes and veterans in, in MMA. Uh, certainly in the heavyweight division, uh, you really have to be made of of, of sterner stuff to last this long um, in a division where people hit so hard. Uh, how do you explain? I mean, keep in mind, you, you have to remember he's he's so high level with his striking. Um, yes, he's. I know people are like okay, he's getting knocked out what 14 times in his career or something like that. Um, oh, sorry. T- <laughs> Uh, yes, 14 times in his career, uh, several times in the UFC, and, and several times in recent years. But he can really take a punch. I, I know people are going to say, oh, but he gets knocked out all the time. He gets knocked out all the time, again, either getting caught by something, just, just a super powerful shot, like an uppercut by a Francis Ngannou, or, um, or, or again, just, just you know something at the end of the fight getting injured like by, by uh, Jairzinho. So his, def- his defense is really, really high level. Um, it, it always has been. The experience is so obvious when you see him fight. So I think that ha- that's a key to his to his durability and why. It, like I think the, the question specifically, why is he so sharp? How does he maintain this? It's like when you've been fighting as long as he has, so much of this stuff is instinctual. Um, he really strikes me as someone who actually, you know, every athlete says they learn from their experiences, learn from their losses. He really strikes me as someone who has, again, both in MMA, in kickboxing, you know, everything he's done. Um, so that really is the key. I know it sounds simple, but I think for a lot of fighters, that's uh, finding that discipline and finding that consistency is hard to do. And and that is something Overeem, throughout his career, I think consistent is is definitely a way I would describe him, especially in the latter stages as he's, as he's gotten older. Uh, you see a lot of consistency. So... That's the key. They say that about, about everything, right? Practice, practice, practice. Consistency is key. Uh, that's really it. And I think we're, we, this has kind of been a theme over the last couple of weeks. doesn't matter if you have five fights, ten fights, or have Overeem's experience. Sometimes a change of scenery can lead to a change of perspective. It seems like him going to Colorado and being with Elevation it's changed some things up. It's changed the way he views himself as a fighter. You know, maybe he got a little extra confidence working with guys like Curtis Blades and working on his ground. I'm sure his ground game's improved immensely. Of course, his ground and pound is super, superbly underrated. But, I mean, sometimes you just need that. Like, you, you just need a change of scene and, and, and perspective changes along with it. And I think Overeem's found that even at 40 years old, which is which is unbelievable. Casey, what do you think? What, 
how do you define Overeem's success here after, you know, a lot of people gave up on him a, a, not too long ago? Um, evolution. He, he, I can't think of a high-level fighter that has evolved so much. Considering he came into the UFC part of his career, it's like, oh, he's the greatest striker the heavyweight division has ever seen. Tonight, he lost to striking. If this was a stand-up fight, Sakai wins that fight. He wins that fight. Easy. So, the fact that it was, it was, the, it was the domination on the ground, and I think this evolution that Overeem has um, taken upon himself, especially going to, uh, going to Colorado and training with guys like Curtis Blades, I think he's like, you know what? I, I go back to him being a prize fighter. He sees the long, this is the long game. At being an older fighter, I think he just feels I can fight longer at a higher level if I take these fights to the ground. And um, we saw it tonight. Uh, if that fight keeps, if that fight stays standing, or if Sakai gets up or stops those takedowns, I have no doubt Sakai wins that fight. Um, actually, the whole buildup was like Sakai was like, you know, oh, this is Curitiba Muay Thai versus you know Dutch kickboxing or what, or you know, um, uh, whatever he's uh, Dutch um, Muay Thai. Like, he actually won that. He won the Muay Thai match tonight, but unfortunately, this was mixed martial arts, and he lost the mixed martial arts match. So, um, evolution, man, it's very impressive. Yeah, I would agree. What else uh, you got? Oh, edgy, go ahead, okay. edgy Bruh in the comments says, You're right, Casey. It's Overeem's ground and pound. What is great? <laughs> you are on right. point. You are on point tonight, my friend. Edgy Bruh. Edgy Bruh. I also think he just trains super smart. Mm -hmm. Like he, he trains like he's never really had an injury. Like he trains and takes care of his body so well. I like it, his training reminds me of Demetrius Johnson, where everything is so meticulous and planned out that he knows when to pump, like take his foot off the gas just from he knows how his body will react to certain things. He also doesn't take breaks like he's constantly training, constantly fighting. Uh, he like 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 we said, prize fight as long as the check clears, he's he's down to fight like he'll lose two in a row. Fight a prospect, win, and then is thrown right back in there against Alexi Olenek, who has like 70 fights, like maybe the only fight with more fights than Overeem, if he does. So I just think that his body is just so used to training that when he stops training, I want that's the Overeem I want to see, like what his body reacts to not putting in like six days of work. He loves it. Like you can he tell, he still loves, loves it. it. What else we got? Thank you, Ambassador. <laughs> Thank you for honoring us with your presence. <laughs> yes, it was an honor and a privilege. Let me find one. Let me find another question. Do, do, do. I think we got, yeah, we got probably go for like 10 more minutes. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Oh, my goodness. A lot of... John, John G says, Mike Heck wearing the freshest white tee of all time. <laughs> That's well right. Well done, Mike. Yeah, I played golf, and I didn't bring enough clothes on the trip, <laughs> so I'm wearing the long sleeve and the white tee. I can't, I can't show you all it's the a good goods look. yet. It's a good look. Uh, do, do, do. Oh man, um, no questions, a lot of comments. Uh, do, 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 do. These guys are so hilarious. Our YouTube, you guys <laughs> in the YouTube section, you're, you're, you're too funny. What's next for Sakai? How about that? Ooh, Sakai versus Olenek? That's like perfect, actually. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Oh, Mike, like... Mike, write that one down, please, for Monday's show. <laughs> and uh, we will not, who is, who is this? We will not credit them. We will not. Uh... Olenek. Who who else is around like, like uh, Walt Harris? Like if we're talking about like Volkov is fun. Um, Cyril Walt's Gaines. Gotta, some Cyril Walt's Gaines. Walt's got a fight, right? And Cyril's got a fight too. Oh, are they fighting each other? No, 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 no. I forget who Walt's fighting. That'd be fun. Fight. Fight. Oh, is Ta who's Tanner Bozer fighting? Uh, he's fighting Andre Olovsky. That's right. Wax, Waxmas one I think was throwing out a bunch of suggestions earlier. I think uh, he or she also said, or someone else picked up on the thread and also said uh, they wanted to see Overeem and Verdum fight again for like a fourth time. So that was mm, it's one Verdum. Of, yeah, yeah. Verdum. Verdum is not even yeah, running yeah, out of the UFC anymore, and I, I don't know if we want to see that fight again. Um, What's next for Sakai? Well, Harris, is fighting, Harris is fighting Alexander Volkov at UFC 254. Okay, okay. Oh, okay, that's right. So that scraps a lot of my plans. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Junior. Junior's coming off say, a knockout loss. I thought they fought, but that was I got confused with Blagoy. Blagoy fought uh, Junior, not not Augusto yeah. Sakai. I mean, well, Saga, Sakai lost. Sakai beat Blagoy too in his last yes. fight. Yes, that, yeah. So, so kind so of like, if they want to do the Junior fight, like two Brazilian powerhouses, like sure. coming off losses, fight Island, fight Island special. What about Gus? Heavyweight Gus. Well, that, that I want to see all. Gus go back to light heavyweight. Heavyweight yeah. OSP. I think so. He's got all, he's got options. 
He's got Michelle Pereira versus James Vick. Hmm. I did, Don't do I, that. I, I, kind of, I kind of forgot about James Vick, to be honest. I forgot he went. Has he won at 170 yet? I know he's going up in weight. He only no. had one. He had the Nico Price fight, which ended so bizarrely. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hmm. um, was that, so this that year? was his first was fight that, at 70. Was that this year? That was that no, was last year. Late last year. That was yeah, the October. Tampa card, I think. October, yeah, October. Does anyone look worse getting knocked out than James Vick? <sighs> yeah, he's that's, he's that's, had a rough go of it. He's got he's still got the talent. I just don't know. Like, he is, but like, he's also losing to like really good fighters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like A. G. Felder, Hooker, and Nico Price, like all those like four of the most violent men. Remember and, the like, mo- and like. Paul Felder punctured his lung in that fight. Yeah. Remember the longest time James Vick, he could not get a top 10 opponent. He won like, what, seven straight or something or, or nine of 10 yeah, like and that. just could not could not get a top 10 opponent. Then he finally gets these top 10 opponents and they just cannot catch a break. And these guys just just crushing him. Yeah. So, in, in, But again, you have to make that jump at some point. And James Vick, unfortunately, made the mistake of calling Justin Gaethje the Homer Simpson of MMA. I was like, ooh. And he and James Vick did the whole you 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 come from a little B league. I'm in the UFC. I was like, oh, bro, don't do this. That's that's a bad that's, that's a bad that's a bad oh, game no. plan. Don't. Did he that. also walk out to Eminem? I mean, did, 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 did <laughs> he, he, of, he also <laughs> has a chain link fence tattooed onto his shoulder. Yeesh. Yeesh. I mean, I have, yeah, I haven't heard much <laughs> from James Vick since the Price loss. Hopefully uh, resting. Hopefully just resting. Honestly, for a guy like that, uh, you know. We talk about longevity, you know. I think part of it is getting rest. When you when you suffer X three knockouts and brutal knockouts in like four fights, you've got to just take some time away. He's been doing a lot of hunting. I've seen on social media. Yeah, probably. Um, before we leave, let's it. talk a little bit about next week. Who else is fighting on the <laughs> Helen Waters and Cards? Uh, according to UFC.com, I'll tell. <laughs> let, yeah. let me let me quickly look this up uh, because so UFC.com has been a little slow. Has well, been a little know- slow up. Well, we know Andrew Lee's fighting Roxanne Modafferi. Kama Worthy and Atman Azatar is now the co-main event for that card. Yes. Not Andrew Lee and Modafferi, which was originally oh, thought. That's kind of uh, awesome. Julia Avila is fighting uh, Sajara Eubanks on that card. That that's fight. a new matchup. Uh, Alan Patrick is fighting Bobby Green. Oh, my God. That fight is awesome. That's a great fight. Ed Herman is now fighting Mike Rodriguez. Matt Schnell versus Tyson Nam. That's yeah. a fun fight. There's like a lot Frank- of bangs on that card. Yeah. Camacho and Brock Weaver. Billy Q and Kyle Nelson. Brian Barberina is back at our lives yeah. fighting Anthony Ivey. Roosevelt Roberts versus Matt Frivola. Sabina Mazzo versus Justine Kish. It's a pretty like good it. card. That's a, bunch of, that's a lot of fun scraps. Unfortunately, guys, according to UFC.com, though, only two of these fights are official. Uh, the Michelle yeah. Waters and Angela Hill main event and uh, Billy Quarantillo versus Kyle Nelson. So Because nothing's official until they're in the octagon. Which was proven. To, which you, Jose, you're correct. Your axiom was proven today. Uh, boy, that was this like this lead up to the today's card just today was just constant, constant updates. They did flash the main card on the broadcast. Yes. That's yes. how I knew that. Um, <laughs> it is real. It Combo is real. Combo Worthy is down the co-main event, which, by the way, if you haven't checked out Combo Worthy's interview on What the Heck, he's just, he's very Combo Worthy-like. He's awesome. So <laughs> I, I love that Worthy Ottman fight. I think, to me, that's my people's main event. That's an awesome fight. That's a great, that's a great co-main event. No disrespect to... Andrew Lee yeah. and Roxanne Modafferi. I mean, they're still on the main card as long as they're not buried on the prelims. But right. this is a great main event. A like, co-main that, event. like Roxanne versus Andrew Lee has actual title implications yeah. or like importance for the division. But in terms of what gets me up out of bed, Cameron Worthy, Odman Azatar, freaking rules. That's a great uh, fight. Casey, I think we have to go to Waxmas one again because someone is saying they asked a great question. Um, what are our thoughts on, and, and also we are obligated to talk about this next fighter at least once per show. Uh, oh, Kamzat versus Kamzat Shemaev versus Gerald Mearshart and Kamzat Shemaev versus Damian Maya. Two fights that are, again, not official as Jose would note, but are apparently in the planning stages or somewhere closer to that is supposed to happen. So again, for Kamzat Shemaev versus Gerald Mearshart at middleweight and Kamzat Shemaev versus uh, Damian Maya at welterweight, uh, which is both supposed to be happening. What do you guys think? Well, Shamaya versus Mirshart, as far as I know, is done. Like, that's happening on September 19th. That mm-hmm. is good to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that I Abu Dhabi the, or the, the state? Oh, it's in, that's in the U.S., that's right? A, that's in that's yes, Woodley, the 19th. Covington. Oh, Comzat tweeted today. Comzat tweeted today. I am in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. Yeah, so 
So 15 fights on that card. 15 or 16 fights at this point. So um, five fights. I think it's a good match. <laughs> I, I, I think it's a. I think it's a great matchup. I think that's a perfect kind of a fight uh, to book him with a guy like Gerald Mirashard, who is very. He does have a lot of skill. Really He's good. had some ups and downs. Um, great on the ground. Great on the ground. Like people are saying, we need to fight a guy. We need Shamayev to fight a guy who can wrestle and. And, and can can work on the ground. I think AK's been saying that for a while. These so, guys perfect. can't stop a takedown. He didn't do anything. He hasn't fought anyone that can stop that can stop a takedown. Prove me wrong. That was my impression of AK. Prove me wrong. Show me that you are this elite prospect. That I, I, look, I've seen it with my own eyes. Those first two fights, and amazingly impressive. Again, even given the level of competition, if you know, you know, you we've seen enough fights. You know when someone is a legit prospect. You, you just you know when you see it. You know within the first the first takedown, uh, they do. You you can see it. But again. Mir, like like Mike said, this is a real, real, real veteran test now, uh, Joe Mirashard. I, I mean, obviously, I think Shemayev will win, but I still think the booking of two fights extremely presumptuous. So now I'm that's now I'm skeptical. I know I'm no, I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical again. I don't know if he, he, he does. Guess I think maybe the Mirashard fight is tough. Maybe he can't make the Maya fight. All right, Jose. Let me ask you this: What are your thoughts on Shemayev versus Maya? Because I there's one person on Twitter who tagged me in something, and people were commenting about it that this is kind of a slap in the face to Damian Maya. Like, cause he has one fight left in his deal. He's hoping to possibly get one more from from all sorts of rumors and reports. But, like, I think you'd want to see Damian Maya, like, in a fun fight. Like, he, the, the guy's been calling out Diego Sanchez for, like, yeah. 18 months at this point. Like, I have one fight left. That's a guy I want to fight. Like, I always wanted to see Maya versus Wonder Boy. Like, one fight left. I think those two guys at this point, that would just be a lot of fun. I even mentioned Robbie Lawler last week versus Damian Maya. That would be interesting. But Hamzat Shamayev? From Damian Maya's potential potential final fight of his career, like is, do you agree with this? Like Casey's got this look on his face, but I want to get your thoughts first. I, well, first of all, he has to beat Gerald Mirshart first, which is not an easy task. Like I don't no. understand the matchmaking where it's like, like if they just booked it against Maya or just Gerald Mirshart, like fine. But like also, I'm assuming Gerald Mirshart's at middleweight, right? Yep. Yeah. And then so he's gonna fight a middleweight. Yes. And then cut down a welterweight and fight. Like, come on, just pick a pick a division. Because <laughs> until he fights Damian Maya, that's three non welterweights he's fought. Like, yeah, he fought Reese McKee at welterweight, but Reese McKee is a lightweight. We all know that. So, uh, if they want to give him Damian Maya, like, I like that fight as a fight. Like, it's going to be a fun fight to watch. But like, I don't want to see Damian Maya ride off into the sunset as another victim of the hype train that is Kamsamet mm -hmm. Shamaya. Like, if yeah. they want to give him one more fight. After that, like, hey, do this favor for us. We will give you a big name after. Fine. I understand. But look who, like, Damian Maia has lost to. Like, Colby Covington. Like, Kamaru Usman. Uh, I, like, there's there's obviously a bunch of fights he's lost. But, like, recently, like, those and like Gilbert, Gilbert Burns, Burns. Like, those three are, like, the top three. <laughs> At welterweight. Like, those are, like, three of the top five. So, like, he only loses to the best. If Kazman Shamaya beats Damian Maia in the way that those guys did, like, Give him top five. Just give him Leon Edwards. I don't care. Like, that would prove enough for me. Um, but I feel bad for Damian Maya uh, as it is. But I like to fight as a fight, but I would like to see Damian Maya get a really big fight before he finally rides off into the sunset. Well, you I'm know, interested. I'm you interested guys, in it. You know, Hold Jose, on. if you, Jose, yeah. if you, if you, uh, if you're listening, if you listen to these uh, Hamza Shamayev stands like Casey and others, uh, he should be facing friggin' Kamara Usman tomorrow. I mean, let's so not. Really, like, so really, he's doing Maya a favor by sure. stepping back in the rankings sure. and giving this veteran a shot. Apparently, like, apparently. And I like Kamzat Shemaev. I think he is a legit prospect. I think he handles himself very well in the media. Like uh, his mannerisms are very like they. I'm sure you guys saw how Habib Nurmagomedov had a press conference in Russia just to like answer questions because there's everyone's had so many questions for him that he just didn't. In, he just did a press conference in Russia. And one of the questions for him was about Hazmat Shamaya. Like, they're asking Habib about him. So he clearly moves the needle. Like, just look, look at our YouTube metrics. He moves the needle. So I think he's super talented. He's he They put the rocket ship on him. I think it's a little presumptuous to book him two fights down the road already in two separate weight class. But I don't have a problem with either matchmaking as long as Damian Maya uh, gets a fight after that. I think Damian Maya is in a is in a classic lose-lose situation because if he loses it's you know you lose to the the hype train like you said but if he wins you know how this sport is like you're hot until you're not anymore exposed like, yes exposed oh, see, him. see he was a can after all he was overrated <laughs> after all see what happens when you put him against contender <laughs> like, 
Mike and Casey were crazy for trying to book him in top 10, <laughs> top 15 matchups. Like, it's a lose-lose for him. Like, it, I, th that's why I don't like it. Absolutely not. It, oh, on, here we go. It's not a lose-lose for Maya. Why? Dude, because Dana White loves Shemayev. He will – Shemayev and Dana White will promote the hell out of this fight. It was. It could probably be a, a – I'm assuming this fight – if they fight a main event for right. a fight night in Abu Dhabi or something like that. It'll be, it'll be a co-main. All the main events are taken. Okay. Well, whatever. It'll be a, it'll be a featured fight. It'll be the people's main event. And, uh, man, no, I think this is, like, a, just a great a great prize fighting fight. Um, because, like, you, prospect versus vet. If, if this is the last fight for Maya, like, so why don't we why don't we, we want this fight booked? Because we think Maya's going to get his ass kicked or we think Maya is an easy win for Maya? I'm not, I'm confused. I don't know. I think I think either way it's bad for Maya. But I think if Maya because Maya, a... Maya's not getting a title shot, he's never gonna get a title shot. He's not he's not unless he goes out on it. If he, if his retirement fight will be a title shot, which I don't think anyone's thinking no. it's gonna happen. No, that's not gonna happen. So this is the best to me. This is the best. If if Maya can crush this, maybe the the hottest welterweight prospect in years. I can't think of one uh, welterweight prospect in years. If Maya can crush him, then Maya leaves going like you know what. I, like I'm still a badass. I'm not this old man. Like I'm leaving out. I'm 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 leaving out on a happy ending. And if he loses, he knows it's his, it's his time to move on. And I think what if it, that's not like again? That's not my. That might not be what he wants. Like we're making a lot of. We he might not want to go out being I want a badass. Maybe he wants to go out fighting someone in the top ten. Like I don't fight know. Diego Sanchez. That's Diego Sanchez. Diego Sanchez, Sanchez, the guy that got a, a BS win over um, <laughs> AK's fucking favorite dude in the world. And it's like. Like, come on, man. Diego that's Sanchez, he, he, he lost. He's not, wow. He's not on a title path. Like, that's who he wants. Like, yeah, I have one fight left. I want to fight this guy. Like, I'll, I want to fight Robbie Lawler. Damian Maya, like, man. Like Take I'll that say, fight, Casey, Damian Maya. Take it, Damian Maya. Casey's right, though, it. that it being a co-main event, it won't uh, – because I, I think it would – I think at this point, Kamzat is getting, like, that – we'll get that, like, Sean O'Malley treatment. Because remember, Sean O'Malley was the co-main of a – I mean, it was a pay-per-view, so it's a little different. But uh, I think he would get the same treatment. So I cannot wait – to hear Stephen A. Smith try and say Hamzat Shemaev <laughs> some overwritten, overcooked ESPN promo yeah. comparing him to friggin' uh, I don't know, uh, I don't want to say Luka Doncic again because that's what we saw in the stupid <laughs> O'Malley promo, but uh, something to that. Who's a baseball? Uh, give me someone in baseball, uh, uh, Jose. Mo uh, Mookie Betts saying like, <laughs> Mookie Betts, this, this, this kid is like a, a Mookie Betts the way he throws the ball through the... Okay, I'm losing grip on this uh, metaphor, but... <laughs> I just, I'm sorry. Right. I just, Wait, the Tatis, way he hits those home Fernando runs. Tatis, uh, grand slam, baby. Uh, I am, but I am, I am already bracing. I am already bracing myself for the Chimaya ESPN hype video, and just, ugh, just no. Storylines, so storylines. I love it. Just remember, as Jose said, he's got to be Gerald Mearshaw first before that could happen. Yes, it's true. And that's not going to be easy. No, uh, not, not at, all. Be easy at all. Gerald Mearshaw seemed very fired up for that. He said he's mm. not going to physically be able to make it to the Damian Maya fight after he steps Gerald in the Mearshart undercover. has, like, how many wins does Kazmat Shemaev have total? 12? 12? 12? Yeah, I thought it was 12. That means he has almost two, like, that means Gerald Mearshart almost has two times as many submission wins. Yes. <laughs> like, let's, everyone's talking about Damian Maya being this big test on the ground. Gerald <laughs> Mearshart has 20 oh, shit. submission Hold wins. on. He's 8-0. He's 8-0. He's 8-0. It How's feels like, like he's 12-0. I so, know. I thought, yeah. Gerald Mitchell has more losses than Kazmat Shemaev has total wins. Like, this is a good test. It's also a middleweight. I do like, like that. Gerald I do Mitchell, like the Mirshaw fight. I, he's I, big. I do like that. I think, I think he's a fun guy. Like, the Mirshaw, like, Mirshaw is a legitimate middleweight. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Kazmat big guy. Shemaev, I think, is a legit welterweight. Yeah. So this is going to be a big test for him. So he's like going to go middleweight, lightweight, middleweight, welterweight. <laughs> That's Cavs and my first four fights. I just want to say, I know we're wrapping up soon, but we're we're almost up to a thousand viewers. The viewership has for some reason gone up. Uh, maybe it's because it's, it's a relatively early night, but I just say, you guys are crazy. Everyone who watches this, you guys are insane. You guys are beautiful. I love you guys. You guys are fucking amazing, but you guys are crazy. All right. <laughs> I'm glad you're watching us. I'm glad you're spending your night with us. I love, I love, I love all of you. But that's wild. That I don't know what's, that's I don't know what's going on. My heat. Nope. Yeah. I think the rating. I think the ratings shot up when we met. Somehow people just knew that we were talking yeah, about Shamaya. I'm glad to. these thousand people are staying yeah. in and watching us rather than going outside during a pandemic. So you're not crazy. <laughs> Incredible. There you go. Incredible. You know, we get that. Let's let's get two more in. 
Two more comments. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? That was a heated one. See what happens when Shemaev gets brought up? It turns it's 20 minutes on Shemaev, no matter what show we do when his name gets brought up. It's unbelievable. Really good. The last question was about Watterson Hill, too. I don't know how we got there. That's a good card. I forgot how good that card was because we're so focused on, like, how uninteresting, like, this card got after, like, all the fallouts. And then, plus, you know, you look at Santos and Glover Teixeira being off next week. Everyone's like, oh, God, this card sucks. And now you really look at it, it's actually really good. Hey, man, nothing's official till they fight. So, for all That's we know, true. five fights could be gone. Well, I find wow. the final question. I'm going to throw this comment up. Happy Wait. birthday to Esther Lynn. I was going to end with that. Ah. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks, Jessica. Ah, Jessica. Spoiler. Another Casey. Another spoiler tonight. Spoiler alert. <laughs> another spoiler. <laughs> Someone. I don't know. Watch the show. No. Uh, I was handling tweeting the results from our uh, tweeting all the stuff from our main card today, and I tweeted the results of the first fight, a decision, and the very first comment was like, "Yo, they didn't even say the result on ESPN Plus yet. Could you wait? Why did you tweet this out so quickly?" So I apologize to that person on Twitter to whom Damn I spoiled. It, to whom I spoiled the result of Hunter Azure versus Cole Smith. Uh, I spo- I must have spoiled it by a solid like 15 seconds. I apologize. Uh, I'm, I'm a loose cannon sometimes. You know, I don't understand. Dude, like, I, I was like, is it going to be a unanimous decision or, is, or, or a split decision for oh Azra? God. Who knows? I, just, I, I had to hide it. my phone in my hat because uh-huh. of those spoilers. And I'm not yeah. even joking. I was like, I think I was like a good 40 seconds behind the, the rest. Uh, Jemayev is like the thing from... Oh, I gotta, I gotta spread this out. Mm-hmm. I can't see the rest. Oh, this is for Jose. This thing is Jose. from, Com- yeah. Shabayev is like the thing from comic books. The thing. Oh, Steve Steve. Smith. <laughs> oh, that's just not him. true. Oh, I could see him doing that. There's ESPN, ABC, Disney tie-in. You know, I think, they, I think they, I think Disney well, does all the Fantastic Four now. So. I believe Marvel and Disney don't have the rights to the cinematic Fantastic Four. So I think they do, do now. I think they do. do they? They don't That'd think. be unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. That movie should never exist in one. They're zero for three anyway. Uh. I don't think Stephen A. Smith knows what the thing is either. No, I don't think I don't know if he. That's that's a little bit. I mean, it's a pretty well-known character, but that's a pull for him, given his his knowledge base. Like, to put it nicely. Um, I, oh, by the way, guys, we didn't even mention Bellator 245 uh, on Friday, right? That's next week, right? Oh. They have two events next week. Yeah. Yes. So we're saying like, man, we got a good card. We also got um, the Machida Davis Turi match, which I'm actually really looking forward to. Plus, I uh, will unfortunately be in a wedding, so I will miss them. Oh. Plus, uh, Kat Zingano. Kat Zingano making her, uh, her belt her debut featherweight. So, uh, yeah, and some of the Ed Roos fighting, Raymond Daniels. That's a good Kat one. Zingano, future cyborg opponent. I think if she wins, I'm pretty sure right away they check. Because kind of, I feel like they're feeding her a lesser known, much lesser known opponent just yeah, to give her a win. Which is great. It's a, ni- it's a nice, it's, it's a tune up fight. This is Kat, hasn't, Kat hasn't been doing boxing since Ma- Megan Anderson sliced her eyeball. Her yeah. So. I, don't, I don't have an issue with the fight. No, no. Yeah. And, then, and then the Saturday card, we oh, have. Yes. The Bantamweight title fight between, which probably the, no offense to the rest of the combatants, but the fight of the weekend is Juan Archuleta versus Patchy Mix. Absolutely. Which is Bantamweight title. Yeah. T- John Fitch versus Neiman Gracie is interesting at 170. Good. And then Liz Carmouche fights Deanna Bennett. Yeah. So that would be fun, too. Is the so Fitch-Neiman fight, fight not a rematch? Is that a rematch? Am I crazy? Nah. Did they not fight the tournament? I thought they fought. Oh, no. They didn't no, no, no. I'm crazy. No, okay. Rory and John Fitch fought to a draw. Uh, so Rory moved on in a technicality. Yeah, yeah. And then he beat Neiman. Okay. Yeah, two good bell torque. Man, this is going to be a busy one. This is going to be a busy week. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Um, uh, we got we got a couple questions. Most people are just kind of, you know, blah, blah, blah. Talking about, you know, we're going to talk about Colby Woodley. But I, I, figure, I, figure, I figure we got plenty of time to talk about that. We got time because I'll be there. And we, then we can talk all we want yeah. about it. Yes. Yes. Do we have any other questions? Uh, nah, we're we're good. Um, just uh, just uh, ooh, wanna, wanna... he's trying to find a, a banger. Yes, once again. Yo, yes. happy happy <laughs> birthday. Birthday. I'm not sure if that's a joke. Is that a joke? I think they just like found their keyboard. Care. But well done. <laughs> Gonna argue with yes. Mother Jesus. The best in the business, her birthday, uh, her birthday today. So everyone, please, in the comments, sing happy birthday. Sing it in the privacy of your own home. We, will, we can hear you. We can hear you. So Everyone uh, tweet videos of you singing happy yes. birthday. Yes. Tweet Alex. <laughs> but tweet them at Alex. Oh, she will lo- <laughs> <laughs> What, me? Yeah, Alex. Al- Al- oh, yeah. Esther's birthday present will be Alex being bombarded with videos. Tweet it at Alex Savas. That's yeah. at A-L-E-X-S-A-V-A-S uh, yeah. on Twitter. Don't- and, uh, yeah. 
And, and I, I gotta say, uh, big shout out to the UFC. Um, I sent Dana a, a text saying, "Hey, it's my wife's birthday. Can we, you know, slash some fights off tonight? You know, let's get it so we have a little more, you know, time to watch some Netflix tonight. You know, relax." So, um, big shout out hey. to Dana for, you know, pulling some fights. You know, hook, I hear you hook, hooking Avatar us up, now. hooking us up. I hear you're watching Avatar now, Casey. I am watching Avatar. Has life been changed? Welcome to the 21st century. You know what? I I enjoy it. I'm enjoying Avatar. I'm, I'm still. I, I just finished um, book one, season one. Yeah, so that's um, the, and that's the kitty one where it starts off real juvenile and kind of turns a lot of people off. The first few episodes, uh, and then when they venture off, you know, it I, gets. I, I appreciate you saying that because that was actually my one critique when as I was watching of Esther. I was like, I really like this, but like, I can tell it's a kids show. It's for well, you kids. Have to- and this, I, and, and this is for just Casey. Everyone that's listening, just you can tune off if you want. <laughs> that's because Aang was frozen when he was like 11. So he's still a kid. So he's never matured. So as the show goes on, it will become like you grow with the character, which is why it's so great. I think I think Casey was saying that uh, that he yeah. realized it was a kid's show. And he was like, how did Jose know that this was right on my level? And that's what he was saying. He's like, he, I think he was shocked that it was like, oh, yeah. He was like, oh, this is perfect for me. How did he know? Thank goodness. And then 100% watch the live action movie because everyone needs to suffer <laughs> like I did in 2010 in that movie theater. Oh, sorry. Your, your, your camera. Yeah, sorry, AK. Oh, yeah, wow. sorry. Um, <laughs> this is like, like, it's like when they like a, people in Around the Horde when they just go gray. Oh, this is like an in memorium. I'm just going to freeze. <laughs> you, you, got, you guys remember AK? He was, he was a good guy. He was a good guy. He was nice. He was nice. Raptor sucked though, but he was nice. He he, he was around. <laughs> he was around. <laughs> Did you freeze him too? Uh, I think he turned the microwave on. My in memoriam. It's the in memoriam. <laughs> oh, okay. You do a very oh, good corpse. Wow, Casey, that was if you could, awesome. If you could do, uh, if you could do it to put the date next to my name, my eighty four, eighty four, eighty four. Remember oh. Kaylee? And I thought, I, yeah, I thought like someone ran the microwave in your house. <laughs> no, no, I'm just dead apparently. So. Dick. I dunked on him so hard that his body shut down. I, <laughs> this is a, what a lovely, morbid way to end the show, guys. Yeah. Oh, I'm back. Unreal. All right. All right I think I, I think we've uh, we've Mike, exhausted everything you put on our seven ton card. Please shut this down, Mike. Yes, that is it. Thank you all for watching. You guys are are crazy. We love all of you. Jose, uh, go ahead. Tune in on Wednesday Ooh. at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Tonight's bonus winner, Brian Keller, is making his return to the A-side. Crystal Excellent. talk. Crystal talk. I messaged him. I go, A-side? Uh, yeah, I go, A-side Wednesday? He's just like, got the tiger's eye in hand. I was like, <laughs> so like it's here. Boom. Hey, there we go. We're making things happen. Uh, tomorrow, Monday is Labor Day. And that's usually when we record between the links. So, honestly, I have no idea what's going to happen with that. So, we're going to figure that out. And I'm working. I'm on uh, the clock. All right. I'm on for like... A few hours, but we'll figure it figure out. It we'll out. see if we can get get the combatants. If not, maybe we uh maybe we go live on Tuesday for a little while. We can do it that way. Have, I don't know. Have fun. Yeah, we'll we'll play it by air. What what, what the hell, you know? It's MMA after all. So we're out of here for Jose, Casey, AK. I am Mike Heck. We'll do it again all week long. Get you ready for like 17 fight cards next weekend. So thank you for watching. We'll see ya. Enjoy your long weekend here in the U.S. <laughs>